Hey guys, in this video we're going to level up your models of streaking grime and the benefits and ease of enamel paints. These effects play a critical role in bringing your miniatures to life, giving them a weathered and battle-hardened look. So grab your brushes and let's dive in. Streaking Grime is an enamel paint specialized to create realistic weathering effects on your miniatures. These products help to simulate dirt, mud and rain streaks that accumulate on armor, vehicles and weapons over time, giving them a more authentic look, plus this technique is perfect for both novices and expert painters alike, and it's easy to learn and apply. Move over Nun Oil, make way for the real king. Before we get started, let's go over what you'll need. First, you'll need a miniature that you've already basically painted. We'll be using a Death Guard Plague Marine for this tutorial, the perfect boy to really get grimy and dirty and show off this effect. Next, grab some streaking grime paint, such as products from AK Interactive or Ammo. Uh, grab an old synthetic brush, uh, enamel thinners such as white spirits, and a few Q-tips. You can even use a makeup sponge and it works really well for large flat areas, but for this one, a couple Q-tips will do. Now I'm gonna paint up our Plague Marine. If you're interested in how I paint these guys, keep watching, but if you're only interested in using enamels and streaking grime, please skip to this time frame in the video. To start off with, we're gonna prime our model black. Here I'm just using a black primer through an airbrush, but you can just use a rattle can. Adding our first base color, which will be Death World Forest. Now you can skip this step if you don't have an airbrush. Now adding our mid-tone of the armor, which is Death Guard Green. Once again, if you don't have an airbrush, you can just paint this model with Death Guard Green and you can also get Death Guard Green in a rattle can. Now, just spraying a little bit from above, I'm going to be using some Nurgling Green just to give us some good contrast between the Death World Forest and the Death Guard Green. Now we have all our base colors down, we're going to start with the metallic trim. For this, we're going to be using Copper by Vallejo and we're gonna make sure we go real nice and easy because we don't wanna get any on that nice, beautiful green transitions we've built up with the airbrush. Take your time with this and make sure you do at least two thin coats to make sure it's really bold and bright. Also in this video, I did miss a little bit of the gun that I do go back and correct. It is the bit before the tip of the gun. I do that all in copper as well. Continuing on with the metallics, we're going to be using Lead Belcher for any of the exposed metal on the gun, the backpack and also on the model. Using Vallejo Black, we're going to be painting all the horns and spikes on the armor and also the front panel of the gun itself.
Now for the tabard or dick cloth, as uh, a lot of my friends call it, we'll be using Screamer Pink. And for this one, just make sure you go in nice and neat. We don't want to get any on that armor and go ahead and maybe do two to three coats to get it nice and vibrant. Now for any of the pipes, skulls, ooze dripping from the armor, any of the maggots, and also the head that's on the grenade by the leg, we're gonna be painting it with ivory by Vallejo. Now I did about three coats of everything here with the ivory. We do want this nice and bright and solid because we will be painting over a lot of this after we use the streaking run. Using Catech and Flesh, we're just going to be painting over this little bit of cloth that's draped over the mouth of this sort of severed head. Make sure you shake the bottle really well to mix the paint because it can separate after time and also to ensure it's at an even consistency. Additionally, you can use a small tip brush on a varnished model and just individually paint all the creases, which is called panel lining, which I'm more than happy to go through in another video. But in this one, we're gonna treat the streaking grime like a wash for a quick and easy application and also show how easy it is to clean up off a miniature. Having loaded up my brush with streaking grime, I'm gonna start around the legs and work myself up, just so I don't get excessive amounts of pooling, and then so I can take from the bottom and drag it all the way up to the top of the miniature, just to get a real nice solid coating all over the model. Make sure that the streaking drime is completely dry because the part that we really want it is in all the recesses and that does take the longest time to dry. Now it's time for the magic to happen. Take your Q-tip and dip it in white spirits and gently wipe off all the streaking grime. It should be damp, but not soaking wet. We don't want to remove all the grime and only on the raised surfaces. We want to keep it all in the recesses. Be patient and gentle. We don't want to damage the paint underneath. Using the Q-tip that's been dipped in white spirits, I start by just gently rolling it over the miniature because I really don't want to scrape off any of the paint or disturb the paint that's underneath. We're only just lightly dabbing it and rolling the brush over the model just to soak up and reactivate that streaking grime. Doing this technique with the Q-tip, it will allow that all the recessed areas will retain a good amount of streaking grime, really giving that definition between the panels and deep crevices within the armor.
Once you have taken off all the streaking grime you want, do make sure this dries to completion because you do want all that white spirits and uh, reactivated streaking grime to dry off the miniature. For all the oozing parts that we painted ivory in the armor and on the gun, we're gonna go over it with Nurgle's Rot, which is a technical paint by Citadel. When using Nurgle's Rot, I tend to go back over the spot about two to three times once it's dried, because I really wanna build up a nice, glossy, disgusting looking finish. Taking Vallejo White, I grab my brush and I do a white line all across the visor. Or if you had eye slits, you would do the same. But then I also try to make a highlighted line on the bottom part of the visor to sort of make a glow effect when we put the red ink on next. Now taking the red ink, we're going to put it all in the crevice that we did the white line and also just sort of bleeding it across the white line we highlighted at the bottom of the visor. And try not to get any on the top part because that'll sort of ruin the glowing effect that we've been trying to achieve. Unfortunately, the next part of the video did mess up, but just for the pipes of the armor, I did paint them with uh, Velopus Pink Contrast Paint by Citadel. How I generally do my glowing effect for plasma weapons or even power swords and things like that, I take Thousand Suns Blue and then I first block out all the glow area that I want. And I normally do about two to three coats because I really want this blue to be vibrant and bright. Now taking white ink in an airbrush and just spraying sort of directly above the plasma coils to build up a nice glow effect. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, you can dry brush like pure white just over the top part. Now using another technical paint from Citadel, I use Nalark Oxide, which is for all the copper. So I'll take a little bit on my brush. You really don't want to overdo it and just do a little bit on like the rivets or bits where like water would pull that would cause the copper to oxide.
And now for the final step, I take Riser Rust by Citadel. It is a dry paint, but what I like to do is put a little bit on my wet palette and I do hydrate it a lot with a lot of water to sort of make like an orange wash. And then I put it in all the damaged parts of the armor and where like all the horns and spikes are growing out to create a really nice rust effect. And of course, a model is only as good as its base. So for this, I um, sort of mark out where the feet are of the miniature. And then I take Vallejo Earth Texture and I just sort of clump it around to make sort of like little mounds on the base. Then when I've marked out all my mounds with the earth texture, I do take a little bit of like coarse sand and I sprinkle some just to add a little bit more variety to the texture of the paste. Also then adding some super glue in just little spots, I then add some bigger rocks to the base. Then we give it a quick black prime. Followed by a nice base coat of catechin flesh. Then once all that's dry, I give it a spray with Death World Forest from above, but making sure to leave a lot of the catechin flesh in the recesses. Then I use Agrax Earthshade to give the whole base a wash. Then I just give it a simple dry brush with a 50-50 mix of Nurgling Green and Ivory by Vallejo. Everywhere that didn't get any of the texture paste, I'm gonna put down some Nocturne Green. Just gonna do about two to three thin coats because I do want this a nice vibrant base before we put down some of Nurgle's Rot. Once applying Nurgle's Rot, I do apply it quite thickly and going around in like a blobbing motion because I do want this to be a solid like opaque color. And then once you've sort of gone around all the base with Nurgle's Rot, I then go back and apply a second coat because I really do want this as thick as possible. Then once I've got the coats down that I want, I do give the base a little bash on the bottom of the table just to sort of get rid of any air pockets and to help it sort of level out. And then also I grab my finger and just sort of clean up any that's spilt over the base. Then when everything's all dry, I glue the model onto the base and then I start adding these nice sort of like decayed rotting tufts just to sort of sell the scene that like it's a dying wasteland. Thank you. 
all that's left to do now is to paint the rim of the base. Now, because our guy's a little heretic, we might as well commit some heresy ourselves and not give this model a black rim. And we're gonna go with a nice catechin flesh all around the base. And now that our model's complete, let's see how everything turned out. Once you get used to using enamels and streaking grime, be sure to experiment and practice. Try different consistencies, mixes, layering and blending methods to discover what works best for your specific project. Warhammer 40,000 offers a vast world of miniatures, so explore and have fun learning new ways to improve your painting and skills. And that's it. Now you know how to create realistic, battle-worn effects using streaking grime on your miniatures. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more epic miniature painting content. Leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and also we'll be doing a live stream on the 28th to paint up an Emperor's Champion which will be this month's uh, free giveaway. All you have to do to win is be subscribed to the channel and there'll be a very good chance you'll get yourself a free painted mini. So thanks for watching Warp Storm and I'll see you Warmasters next time.